Hey everybody, so I'm back today just to show where I'm at with a couple of things. Um, I'm pretty much done with some bolt action uh, tank, one of my bolt action tanks, Sherman's, and also my Greyhound, but, and then also I've got um, some Infinity Miniatures assembled, and um, also um, I wanted to just kind of have a little bit of a chat, a bit, just, to, just sort of like a philosophical subject on modeling, terrain making, the wargaming hobby, um, and just an observation I made. I'm kind of interested in people's opinions on it. Um, so first, I'll just show this. Now, I actually did some new things that I've never done before on this. You know, I, I'll show a bit of a turnaround how I did this. Now, I went for slightly muddy tracks. Like, I could have did a lot more weathering, but I just... I decided I didn't want to, so it, it's meant to look kind of like it's been running um, through the dirt a bit, and so I think you can probably see that there is dirt in there. Um, I did do some rust, rusting effects, but I didn't just cover it with mud. Um, I did have it so like the mud was kind of spitting up the back, the dirt, but I didn't completely cake it on. Um, not against that look, I just honestly didn't want to go for that. I kind of wanted to see the, the machinery a bit more and not just cover it. Now, um, you know, I, I did use, um, I did a, a bit of uh, rusting on this, as you can see. Now you might notice some fading, some, some running stains kind of going down it. Um, I did do a little bit with oils uh, to try to, ca to get that effect slightly in different spots. Um, with the fluorescence here, I'm going to do a proper showcasing when I'm when I actually put my my final varnish on this. This is pretty much done. I just haven't put the final varnish. Um, one thing that I did do, and I'm not sure it captures it as much in this lighting. You won't see it as much on the top here. Like you can see that sort of solid green. But if you look at the sides, if you notice that they're a bit lighter, um, and there's a bit of a weathering kind of mottled look on the sides. It's because, you can maybe see it there, um, it's it's not overboard on anything, it's just sort of maybe a bit subtle. And actually I'll, I'll show that look again, on the, I did it on the Greyhound too. I actually used um, some various colors of oil paint to create some fading and then used, you know, mineral spirits to wipe it off and create some just weathered fading on it and my inspiration for that is um, the MIG channel has a tutorial on how to do various techniques with weathering on tanks and that's where I actually learned that technique um, and so I actually thought it was good like I didn't do it on the top here but if you could see here you know here it's a bit faded like where it's sort of like the rain is running off of it and stuff um, I just tried to show that. And so, yeah, you know, I, I've never done a tank before, and I'm kind of happy with the way it came out. Like, it's got a, a battle damage weathered look, but not to the point of, um, you know, I, I didn't want it to be too far, like, you know, a rust bucket. Um, and so, yeah. So that's my first Sherman. I did um, end up magnetizing uh, the turret on this one. I didn't do it on the Greyhound. Greyhound's actually on a hollow ring and so it would be a little bit trickier and I just decided I'm just not going to do it. Um, the cleanup on this, if you saw my other video, this was the one that actually required less cleanup and so um, you know there was a little bit of cleanup involved but it, it was fairly easy to put together. It wasn't too bad. Okay, next one is the Greyhound. You might notice here in a bit front where I use a bit more mud in the fading, like um, I guess more of a, the, the oil color that would cause that muddy, light muddy look would be a um, raw sienna is what it's called. Um, but this is uh, the Greyhound here. I've got my heavy machine gun magnetized um, in case I want to use that. I've got the mud on the bottom, coming up the front, coming up the back, but not so much 
on the sides and the top. So it's it's been down the muddy road, but not you know not too. It's not too dirty. Um, so I actually um, I enjoy this kind of look, like just the sort of the, the fading, like I talked about some of the streaking, the, the oil streaking, um, dirt streaking in combination with just some regular rust effect, dark rust. Um, yeah, I kind of put on the stickers, I I weathered the sticker, um, the stars as well, just to make it so they don't look like they're brand new on a, on a weathered piece. But uh, I guess I'll go up a little closer here just to show this. So that's that's the sort of first look of my. I guess that's the the style I'm going to do for my vehicles for bolt action. So now, um, not as much to show on my Infinity. I um I might have shown some of this stuff already, but I've got uh, a hacker that I'm going to be working on for my Pano Army. I've got um, I've started painting and sealed this guy up because I thought I might use him in a game before I had him finished. But I've got uh, my Crusader Brethren, which. Um, Nice looking models in Infinity. Do you like them? I assembled my um, and did the same for my my drone bots. This is the Sierra drone bot. And then I also have I think this is called a cutter. I'm not sure. I'd have to look. I don't remember. Oh no, this is the Pathfinder, I think it's called. Um, so it's just a little bit different in its guns and armament than the Sierra. But it's the same kit. You kind of just convert it, essentially. They're not on bases right now, obviously. Um, so, what was I going to talk about? So, um, I'm really... I, what I'm planning on doing over the next bit is there, there are a lot more Infinity players than Bolt Action in my city, and I really do like the, the Normandy front terrain and, and sort of... I find some of the charm, personally, maybe because I haven't actually been playing World War II games, but I find the terrain and the scenery setting to be part of the charm of, the, uh, of playing these games. And so... Um, or playing, you know, the the World War II, the the bolt action game. Um, Infinity, where I'm playing, they, they have a lot more terrain, and the game is a bit more popular in the city, actually. Um, just happens to be the city that I'm in. And so I'm planning on spending much more time working on bolt action and World War II terrain um, versus Infinity terrain. Now, having said that, I've been planning on getting some buildings, and I'm planning on making some buildings, but I'm also planning on getting some, and, and um, you know, you're probably familiar with Foreground as a company. I'm looking at um, getting buildings from them and another company um, that makes nice products, and when looking at some of the folks that um, I subscribe to their channels, I really like their work, um, that have demoed or showed some of the Foreground stuff and some of the other companies. I've noticed that some of them actually have furniture and lots of interior design kind of stuff. And so I guess what I what the thought came to my mind and I'll preface this discussion is that I'm not knocking anyone for getting to really like high levels of detail and scale modeling because I actually really like scale modeling and to be honest when I see that stuff I think wow that is really cool like that stuff is great um, it looks awesome you know and particularly in games where you might have an object that you need to um, as a focal point so it's an object that you need to capture or do something with like a computer or could be anything you know a safe to crack or something these objects in, in furniture could be pretty cool you know add them to your room and things. But I guess, I don't know whether it's the perfectionist in me or just being dazzled by the product, but I started looking at this furniture and one, you know, the stuff's not cheap because, you know, to <laughs> really to furniture one room in one of these houses, you could basically buy another one of these houses and, you know, alone, you know, just for one room. And so, pardon me. Um, so 
I got to thinking to myself, what am I doing here? You know, um, what do I want to do here? You know, I know I want beautiful terrain boards for World War II. I know I want really nice looking houses. I know that I like these houses like Foreground that actually have wonderful looking floors and doors and interior. But do I actually want to buy and furniture these houses? Not knocking anyone that does that, because um, I think it's so cool. But then I thought to myself, am I doing wargaming here? Or am I now getting into dollhouses? You know, like, because I almost feel like, I'll be honest, when I started looking at the furniture, I almost started wondering what scale the dollhouses were for their furniture, you know, because I was thinking that's probably, that's not cheap either, but, you know, it could have been an avenue to maybe get some, save some money or something. And so, personally, I kind of came to my own opinion that unless I'm putting like wallpaper on the wall personally inside or making some of the walls look nice or something, I'm probably not going to be furnishing my wargaming terrain houses for World War II because I can buy more terrain, I can buy more models, the hobby's kind of, you know, it's it's pricey to begin with, you know, um, you know, um, and, 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 and so I, but I thought it was an interesting concept. You know, as far as like that, I even had to felt like I needed to address it. Now, I'm going to ask everyone just what are your thoughts on the subject? Now, I think I know what I'm going to hear, and I think what I'm going to hear is it's what you want to do, it's what you want to spend your money on, it's what you like. And you know what? That's always the answer. You know, and, and I and I I get that, but I'm kind of interested in what are others. <coughs> part of me are doing and why in that area just because I spent a lot of time on this hobby and it was just an interesting kind of point for me of clarification as to how far I was going to go you know in in my development for what I want to do for this so um wargaming or dollhousing <laughs> I don't know <laughs> or do you just like to incorporate really high levels of scale modeling in your houses and boards you know um and so, um, food for thought, um, just something that I kind of consciously had to think about and um, come, to, to come to wraps with in my planning for my budget and spending my time. Um, interested in what you guys think. So, hope everybody's having a good one and talk to you later.